Hello, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, once again, uh, my name is Peter Mbayi Bajo. Um, those who will have been following me on YouTube, uh, as usual, I do present the, the Concomer history, which I made part one and two. And at the end of part two, I promise not to come up with anything, unless, of course, uh, it was necessary. Uh, but after that one, I have received a lot of calls and requests uh, from where I left off in part one, especially regarding the Sangu skins, Sangu area skins. People wanted to know more and to use that as a yardstick to resolve future issues. Uh, so um, normally, I have put myself out there and said, wherever the truth is, I will say it. Uh, I have been factual and I'll be factual. What I do not know, I'm going to tell you honestly that I do not know. But what I do know, I'm going to let other people know. You see, um, like I said, um, I'm not into any business venture in terms of uh, financial gains, no. I have lived my life uh, by way of honesty and uh, to go after the truth and say it when I find it. It doesn't matter where that leads me to. And so recently those who know me very well have called to ask me uh, about security issues regarding some of the information I'm bringing out there. And I assure them that like any other man, like Dr. Martin Luther King said, he would have loved to live in longevity and to enjoy life with his family. So am I, but I am not threatened by anything because I know that the facts that I am bringing forward, people will want to hear it. And those who do not want to hear it are either part of the perpetrators or they intend to perpetrate injustice, which I will not let them do. So I am not afraid of anybody. I can die at any time. Nobody's going to live forever. And I, that is the least thing I would think about. You can come after me. I put my information out there. You can find me anywhere you want. I don't care. And those who do not know me or have not heard about me, uh, uh, student leadership during my youthful days, I've been very controversial. I go, I, I go after authorities that do injustice to students or whatever. I challenge them. I always want to understand that when I became a police detective in Ghana from 2000 to 2009, I served at the Shanti region, Mambontain in Kumasi, in the Shanti region. I have dealt with controversial cases as a detective. My colleagues will tell you, I do not fear anybody. I have the track record. The truth, no matter where you listen to, I will say it. And uh, if somebody makes his mind that he's not going to make the truth his watchword or her watchword, that's your problem. I will always say the truth, no matter where he leads me to. And so on that note, people have requested that where I left off in part one about some good area schemes, I should try and bring more of that, which I am going to do exactly. Uh, I might take a little, but maybe after the 47, 45 minutes I normally do, that's where I'll leave myself to. You see, so where I left off as uh, Jangoja, as the, the chief of Sangu area, uh, the incident did not, uh, his uh, rule did not end uh, in, in uh, 1929 or 1928, as the episode said. He went on as a police officer, that is the Gold Coast Constabulary, till his retirement. So if he was a seven police officer at that time and he retired, I mean, he took at least 10 to 15 years during his reign as the chief of Tobal, Nansangu. So that time when he had retired, he had one Kumba from the Wabiti family, who was his nephew, that is a direct nephew, his sister's son, son, and uh, he was from the Wabiti family of uh, the Chadu clan. So I will deal with, uh, if I say Sangu, Sangu comprises of Sangu Chadu and Sangu Dondra. Uh, the Sangu Dondra area 
comprises of the neogenic skin and their area. And that of uh, the Chadu area relates to those of us from Kwakotabi down the way to Tatundo, uh, Dundon, uh, Sangul area, all the way through to Umbolado, that enclave, uh, the Achedo area. So there are those, I will deal with both area skins and the matters arising as a result of other skins coming up, which I will deal with. You see, so when Kumbo was running errands for his uncle, Jambuja, as the chief of Toba, by then, Kumbo and Ku, I told you, were at uh, Wabine. That is between uh, uh, Mwatong and uh, Yalanka. Nobody's at that place today from the uh, Wabiti family. They have other smaller units or uh, 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 places that their people live, live, but the majority of them were at Wabine. So Kumbo was at Wabine and uh, running errands for his uncle, Jamujo, who was a chief of Toba, Nyan Sangu. So he saw that he was able to coach him and train him as a young man to also be very good in leadership role. So before he even passed on, Jamujo passed on, he had skin Kumbo as the chief of uh, Wabiti. It was later on due to their internal wrangling, which I did not intend to make public and did not intend to discuss in this episode that Kumbo and his side moved to Kwarotao, some went to Belando, some went to Chakundo, and some at uh, uh, Besayim today. I do not want to go into that, but if anybody sees me or asks me uh, behind the doors, I should be able to tell you why. And uh, the Jamboja people, some of them were at Tekasarne. Tekasarne is after Tatundo, when going to uh, San, uh, Nangmundo is on the west side. Somewhere there, somewhere at Matong, those at Matong are still there, that's the Juti family. Somewhere at Dundon, a few of them. So those that were at uh, uh, Tekasarne moved to Tuchido, Nasangmado, Jutilo. And some of them moved to Dondone to join the other people at Dondone. And uh, the Jayung family, where we now have Jayundo, uh, they moved to Jayundo, where we have Jayundo today. Uh, I can tell you that uh, uh, all, I'm not going to talk about Sangul history in a whole. I am only going to relate these issues to Sangul area skins, the history about the skins. And so some of the families that will not hear their name does not mean that they, are, they did not make any history. They made a lot of history. But I am not in a position to be able to delve into that since my path has been the skins. And so whoever wants to involve in that, if they want further assistance, I may be able to help, but I wouldn't be in a position to deal with that aspect. So I apologize to other families that may not hear your name come up that much. You see? So these were the divisions. So Kumbo was, uh, Kumbo and Ko moved to Parapotal, and he was still the chief of Wabiti. And uh, Jangboja was still alive as the chief of Sangu. Now, when Jangboja passed on, uh, uh, that was uh, after maybe 1940, uh, the precise date I cannot uh, tell. So now the Juti family had nominated one in Bayinje, uh, Balban, uh, Bayinje Maban, who will later on be known as Mbayinje Konkomba. Uh, that's why you'll find the records because. Uh, most of this uh, registration and gazetting were done by non concomers And so they will take the person's first name, last name, and then they will put a tribe, just like uh, you will have uh, Jambuja, uh, who also later on somewhere you will find Jambuja Kokomba when he was a uh, police officer. That's what they did. So he was nominated. All the rites were performed. Normally, you will have to go to the shrine of Sangu and be fortified and be blessed and other things. That ceremony was done. So he was the chief, but he was the chief in waiting, Sangu chief. But they agreed, the Juti sat down and agreed that since Kumbo was a blood relation by way of mother, that is the mother was from uh, the Gersiti family, uh, the Juti family, they will give him that respect because he was the oldest. And so any cases that came to Sangu palace were sent to Kumbo's palace for adjudication. There was no issues. There were no issues. And it went on smoothly because it's not like today, like I told you that we are so greedy that you don't know who owns what. They were all together as one people. 
But the fact is that most of these skins in the northern region, about 99% of them, are inherited patrilineally. That's something people should know. Skins are not inherited matrilineally. They are inherited patrilineally. So if you are agitating for any skin, make sure you are from the patrilineal side of the skin. So Kumbo was from the matrilineal side. They only accorded him that critical rule out of respect by way of blood relation in terms of matrilineal. And he was the oldest. They didn't see any reason why they should jump because they thought that if somebody was going to die, uh, in terms of ages, he was much older than Bayi. And so there was no point uh, overriding him. They allowed him to act in, the cap in, the, in that capacity. See, so people will now want to know why uh, the Tatan is now mentioned in terms of uh, Sangul's skin. And I'm going to tell you. Just like Kumbo was uh, running errands for his uncle, Jamboja, one Unokbo uh, Nembe was also a nephew to Kumbo, and he was running errands for him too. You see the, the chain now. So uh, Kumbo, before his death, had told his people, the Wabiti family, that that respect that was accorded him by duty was not a right, it was a privilege. And so he will advocate that in his absence. Nobody from the uh, Wabiti family should agitate any day that he want to become Sangu chiefs. That was not their role. And they understood. And I can tell you on record that there's no single person from the Wabiti family who has come forward that he wanted to ascend the Sangu skin. Because they are very decent people. They know what the history is. See, there may be a few of them who may not understand, and you know, every family has some, but that is the truth. And nobody has come out to say that he wants to ascend the Sangul skin because they know that they are not the right heirs and they had been told by their grandfather not to. You see, so when the Kumbo died and Uborambayi uh, was now going to assume full control of uh, the Sangul skin. And Nembe contended that he was not a chief then. He contended that so long as uh, his uncle was allowed to act in that capacity, he can also become the Sangu chief. And so he, therefore, there was an argument, and the, um, what do we call it, Utinda or Sangu came out to say that no. The lineage was clear that that skin belongs to the duty family. And so there was no way that he could ascend the skin. He did not uh, understand and uh, move on to the Dobon Traditional Council. That was the first time a case of Sangustin had traveled to Dobon Traditional Council. And so all the parties were assembled there. Uh, the facts were presented, and the Traditional Council panel uh, agreed and upheld the position of uh, the duty and uh, all the, uh, the families of Sangu that the lineage was clear, and so there was no point deviating from what has been laid down. So it was easy. And uh, Mba Yinje, uh, who was registered and gazetted as Mba Yinje Konkoma, was registered on the 4th of January, 1964. See? So after that incident, Nembe had to break away, and uh, he formed the tattoo in the skin. And he became the first chief of Tatondo. You see. So after the funeral of uh, Kumbo was performed, his uh, son, Finde, became the second chief of Wabiti. You see. So there was that uh, 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 difference there. And the hierarchy. You see. And they both rule alongside with, uh, with uh, the Sangu, main Sangu skin. And there, was, there were no issues. Until uh, Mba Yinje, the Sangu chief, died around 1969-70, when the Jangboja Samali was nominated and went through the rites as the next Sangu chief. It was then again that uh, Nembe, who was now the no of uh, Tatundo, came up again that no, he still was not satisfied with the ruling. And so he went back to the Montreal Council and presented a case. 
And this time around, it was not difficult to deal with because the lineage was clear and there had been a, a precedence in the ruling. So it didn't take them time and the case was disposed of. So Samali Jamboja was now uh, registered and gazetted uh, in October of 1975. The days are there. These documents are public records. You could find them at the Dogon Traditional Council, Regional House of Chiefs, National House of Chiefs, and even the archives, because there were publications. When the Gazette Chief, there will be publications in the daily, uh, daily graphics and other papers, which are there for people to check on. You see, since then, uh, from now on, I haven't mentioned the uh, area schemes of uh, uh, which I'll come to. So now, under the Sangurchadu area, there are branches. So if you look at the contemporaries, you will find a chief of uh, Nawati at uh, Mbolado. Uh, the first chief, as we know him on record, was um, a Tempin from Mbolado. So after his death, there has been that succession too. And uh, we have Bukbaja, who is uh, from the Teta team, that's their chief. Uh, other chiefs that came before that, which are not known, I told you I'm not going to deal into that. I only deal with the substantive cases that we know of. And there are other sub-chiefs from other areas. The issue which is uh, with the main sample skin is what I will be making clear when I come up after having gone to the uh, Dondon family of Sangu, which I am going to go there now and I'll be back. So uh, when I mentioned Nabdo, Na was the first chief uh, of uh, uh, the Dom family, uh, outside of the clan. And uh, if you, from after his death, that is why the name is synonymous with uh, New Jado, and significant, New Jado. But after his death, New Jado became the second chief. Maybe the gaps that are there as regents and caretakers, I'm not going to go into that. After New Jado was Kuwila. After Kuila was in Tungui, who died recently. So, if I mention that of uh, Chadu, family of the Sangu, the same way with the Dundon family. So, those who are heirs to the Dundon side of the skin are Bondetib. So, we have Bondetib, we have Magurtib, we have uh, Basatib, we have Kangbatib, and the other affiliates. You see, but the heirs to that skin. Abundative based at Nahuile, New Jado, Nablo. There's no issue with asking. The, if there are issues, they are within the internal lineage, internal lineage, which they are all eligible to, and they have the right to contest. But they are not from the other uh, families of uh, Dondo. See? So that aside, there's no problem with that. The one that is at the Chadu Sangu is the main issue. You see, so when um, Samali was still ruling as the chief of Sangu, uh, Nimbe was still alive. Nimbe died later on, and Langa, Langa became the second chief of Tatondo. Uh, so Findi, when Findi was, Findi was also alive, after Findi's death, his son, uh, Ujain, Finde became the third chief of Wabine, based at Parwata. But then uh, Samali was still alive. So Langa died before Samali. When Langa died, his son, Gabuja, who is known as John Kumai, succeeded his father, Langa, as the chief of Tatondo. By then, Samali was still alive. Ujian was still alive at Parwata. So uh, Obor Samali of Sangu died in 1999. So after just one year, which was around 2000, 2001, that uh, the chief of Tatundo, Gabuja, John Kumai, dashed to the Yana's palace and contended that the Sangul families have agreed that he ascends the Sangul skin. Of course, there were elders in that palace. They know the trend. And so they told the Yana and no, the gentleman that came was not from the lineage that occupies the Sangul skin. So they had come to inform the Juti family and they wrote a petition to the Denyana. In 2002, the case was called. So the parties all went there and uh, Utenda of Sangul told the Yana that uh, the family that ascends Sangul skin were the Juti. 
So the gentleman that came to you was not from the duty lineage and cannot be the Sango chief. See? So Yana didn't know that. That's what I told you people that nobody should run to the Gombes that they should skin you as a chief because they don't know the lineages. That's why we call Kokpasa, they don't know. So how will they skin a chief? They are only going to cause trouble for you because they will put anybody there. Somebody who is able to pay their money, excuse my language. They will take money or whatever gifts that they will want and then put your hands against each other. That's what they have done in the past. It's, there are exceptions. There were very good uh, uh, Yanans who on record have done a very good job. I can attest to that. I have records. Yes. But some just took money, put the heads of Kokome against each other. I told you before that if they are alive, they should be ashamed of themselves. If they are dead, the same thing. I'm not going to retreat from that. Yes. So that case was called, and this was clear. So the young man said, okay, now that it has come to his foe, they should all go and bring their records. Because those skins were old skins, and they should have records. He will also find out from the traditional council who the heads of that skin were. And before that two weeks, he gave them to bring documentation. The unfortunate incident of the uh, 2002 happened, and the young man passed on. So that case had been hanging for some time. By then, the UT side of the family nominated one Balaban Salfo to be the region of uh, the Sangu scheme. And so there was no scheme until 2017 when the UT family had nominated one Ebenezer Balaban, uh, who is a high school teacher. And in his uh, name on the record would be uh, Balaban Tungbaki. Mbaji the second from the duty family. And he had gone through the rice and went through the customer rice at the shrine. But there's a contention. He is not a judge the Sangu chief yet because the case this time, the duty family, after he was in skin, he took the case because uh, Gabuja uh, John Kumayi of Tatundo, who is the Tatundo chief, was still parading himself and contending that he was uh, the chief of Sangu. So there's that friction between them. And so he took the case to the Bon traditional council this time, and the case is pending. I'm not going to go into the legalities of that. When that case comes up or it is closed, then the people will take it from there. I'm not going to sit here and tell the authorities what to do. I'm only laying the facts there. So that's, that has been that until now. So uh, uh, those who are asking for the history of that area, that's what it has been. And I am not going to sit here and uh, say all this without referring to our neighbors, the Basaris. They are very good neighbors. And so their area skins, majorly, or the major skins are four. Nakpabwa, now I understand, is the paramount chief of Tetali. Uh, in actual sense, all those skins that you see around the Basaris, apart from, the, unlike the Sangu skins, where the hierarchy is from the top and branch two, to each side and went down the branch. That of uh, the Basar Tib at uh, Basari people in Tatale is not like that. They are parallel. If I say parallel, they are at par. No skin is above the other. On record, that's what I have seen. So uh, we have Nanchamba skin. And actually, if I go into the records that I have, Nanchamba skin is the oldest. And that Nanchamba that I'm talking about is Nanchamba number one or number two the Gumpen, that border with Togo. That is the oldest king, but I'm not going to go into that. They are very nice people, but nice neighbors. I'm not going to go into their internal affair. But just for the purposes of their internal wrangling, where one will want to subject one to undue influence, is why I'm bringing all this. So he is there. You have the Kuyuli Bor, Kuyuli take care of his Kuyuli people, Nakpa Bor, as the name denotes, takes off for Nakpa people, and we have Kandom Bor as the name denotes, condemned people. Those were the four major old skins of uh, the Basaris. And so, and uh, for the records, all those skins are under the Zoli Lana, or Zoli Na, who is the chief of Zabzugu, uh, Yajo. All those four Basari skins were under the Zabzugu chief directly, your Zoli Na. It was only the Sangu skin that opposed to Yana directly as a divisional skin. So on the records, the Sangu skin is of equivalence 
to the Yol Zal uh, Na, which is the Zalzuguskin. So Samguski and Zalzuguskin are on the same level. But because of their internal wrangling, they have suppressed themselves in, into a relegation, if I will put it that way. And people now tell them what to do, including the current Nakwabor. Nakwabor's does not even over, over uh, does not supersede the Basaris, let alone the Sangul uh, skin. So I am saying here that uh, on record, this is what it is. And so uh, if Nakwabor is listening or whoever is on that skin is listening, he should pull a break on how he deals with uh, the concomers in the area. They are very nice people. We don't want to go into the niggle beauty of what will happen. We don't want to go there. We are very in good relations with them. And so if Nakwabara is listening, do not dare that you spread. Your control is not even over the Basaris. If they know their history and they know how the skins were spread, and let alone you spill over to the Concomber area, which is a Sangul skin, which is higher than yours on record. The status is higher than your, yours. I am not into this against anybody, but I'm just telling them based on a uh, precedence, what they have done and what they intend to do, that they should not dare. They shouldn't. The Sanguti will resolve their issue. When they come up, they will now fix it. If, if I'm alive, I will tell them. I'll give them the documents, give them the structure for them to build on. And so nobody should think that the internal wrangling of Sanguti should be taken advantage of. It should be in their lane. Stay in your lane. On this note, again, I think that I have stepped on so many toes, uh, as usual. This is what I do. I do not condone with injustice, and I'll go after anybody that will want to perpetrate injustice. If, as a result of this, that I will lose friends, so be it. I have made so many friends. I've been a very nice person, and that's what I consider myself to be. And so if my telling the truth, will make people look or make me awkward among my friends and peers and family, so be it. This is what I have resolved to do, and I will do it to the end of my life, no matter what time it will be. Now, on this note, my information is only there on part one and two. And so this time around, it's only my name, Peter Bajo. And when you go to YouTube and you type it like that, you will find me. I am not into financial gains as a result of what I do, but I just want to lay the history there because the emotions, the pressure to let this come up is enormous. It is. I have sleepless nights from the forces. I don't know where they come from, just to let this go. And I hope that by doing this, I will have some internal peace and rest. And thank you, everybody. Again, I apologize for people that I will step on their toes on. But if you, if you don't change and you want to continue, that, I'll keep on stepping on your toes. I, I will be the last person to be quiet. Any politician, anybody, you do the right thing. And you will be my, my, my guest. And thank you for listening. Bye-bye.